Adafal Gabriel, I hope I pronounced it correctly, although I'm not sure, from Uppsala in Sweden. And the title is Smokeless Tobacco, or SNUS, and Mortality After Myocardial Infarction. Thank you very much for the introduction, dear audience. I'm very proud and honored to be here to present uh, our abstract entitled Smokeless Tobacco in the form of uh, Swedish snus and mortality after myocardial infarction. Some background. Sm um, snus is a type of smokeless tobacco made of uh, finely ground moistened tobacco. Uh, it comes in two main formulations, as you can see to the right, left here, as sackets or portions. Uh, almost like tiny tea bags, some might say, or as you can see to the right, in a loose form. Snus has been shown to have acute uh, effects on the uh, acute hemodynamic effects, such as uh, increased blood pressure, increased heart rate, and increased blood levels of adrenaline. Uh, looking at observational data, uh, it has also been shown that. Uh, at least indications of an increased risk for fatal myocardial infarction. So no study have addressed the question if SNUS users who do suffer myocardial infarction benefit from discontinuation. So we hypothesize that cessation of SNUS use after an MI will reduce total mortality risk. To our help, to investigate this hypothesis, we had uh, a Swedish um, uh, database called Swedeheart, which is a national quality register. Uh, the study design was prospective. Our study sample, however, was restricted to all SNUS users who were admitted to a coronary care unit for an MI in Sweden between the years of 2005 and 2009 who were also under the age of 75 and who were examined two months post-discharge. This two, two months post-discharge examination was part of a standardized um, follow-up visit offered to all patients who were discharged after uh, an MI in Sweden. The median follow-up time was about two years. The exposure we uh, defined as po post-MI snus quitters versus post-MI snus users. The outcome was total mortality. Here are some selections of baseline characteristics. And let me just point out, um, make a few points. As you can see, in the snus quitters group, uh, they had a much lower smoking exposure, both past and present. <coughs> For example, only 4.3% of the snus quitters were concomitant smokers versus almost 13% in the snus users group. The quitters were also more physically active. Um, for example, 45% of the snus quitters had performed some type of exercise seven or more times during the past week before baseline versus only 35% in the snus users group. Similarly, they participated in cardiac rehabilitation program to a greater extent than the snus users, and they were still employed to a greater extent than the users, despite the same ages. This gives you an idea that it might have been like that uh, the snus quitters were in fact more health conscious than the snus users from the beginning. Looking at our results, as you can see, there were 14 deaths among the snus quitters during follow-up and 69 cases in the snus users group. In model A, which was a model adjusted for age and gender, we had a 48% reduced risk of dying during follow-up. In model B, which was further adjusted for past and present smoking exposure, we had a 44% reduced risk. And in the multivariable adjusted model, almost a mechanistic model, we further incorporated the variables diabetes, hypertension, blood pressures, and a numerous of other potential confounding factors. There was a non-significant 32% reduced risk of dying 
during follow-up. So coming to our conclusions, in this prospective court study, discontinuation of smokeless tobacco in the form of Swedish snus after myocardial infarction was associated with a lower risk of subsequent mortality. This association seemed to be independent of smoking habits, but may partly have been explained by concomitant changes or differences in other lifestyle variables. So as this is a, an observational study, uh, we primarily look at it as a hypothesis generating study, but we do think that this may motivate studying the effects of quitting snooze post MI in a randomized clinical trial. Thank you for your attention. Questions? Frédéric Soumont, Le Soir, Brussels. Um, there is a controversy in the community of the uh, uh, stopping to tobacco. Yeah. That the, the effect, the, the detrimental effect, is only due to nicotine, not to smoke, of course. Yeah. And there is a controversy of, about the consequence of the use of NRT. Uh, do you think your conclusion are still the same for the other, uh, other form of nicotine consumption without smoke? I don't think we can draw that conclusion from this study. There are numerous of, uh, apart from the nicotine content, there are numerous other uh, differences between snooze or smokeless tobacco in different forms and NRTs. So uh, I do not think we can extrapolate these findings to uh, nicotine uh, in other forms. No. So what, what is your final conclusion? I mean, if you adjust it really according to all the differences, there is no statistical, statistical significant uh, difference anymore. But how do you interpret this data and what is the advice to sn snooze smokers? Uh, snooze users, that's, sorry. That is, of course, an important question, what you do in your clinical uh, praxis. Uh, as I said, I do not think that this study can alone um, you, can draw, you cannot draw the conclusion that you should advi advise uh, your patients to discontinue snooze. But if you look at the whole picture with all the known effects that we know uh, snooze uh, and smokeless tobacco have, uh, I do think that it's not a very controversial question. Snooze has been shown to have acute potent hemodynamic effects, uh, probably an increased risk for fatal myocardial infarction, indices of um, proarrhythmia due to nicotine exposure in animal studies, and so on. So I do think that this study adds to this um, evidence. So, um, um, and I'm not alone in this uh, view. I mean, the American Heart Association did the same uh, advice, uh, or they concluded that smokeless tobacco is not harmless, and the Swedish uh, National Health Institute agrees too. So I do not think that it's uh, a controversial question. Mm -hmm. Yes. Could you just explain to us a little bit more about the background of snus and um, you know what, what the cultural view is in Sweden? Is it seen to be more acceptable than smoking, for example? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, snus has actually um, increased. The use of snus has increased in Sweden the, the past two decades or something like that. It has now reached the plateau, but about 20% of the Swedish male population are daily users and about 4% of the Swedish female population. Um, so it's a very common way to use uh, tobacco in Sweden. And um, uh, it definitely is more, um, it is considered much better to use news than to smoke in Sweden, absolutely. And so is it something that um, you're trying to discourage the use of, obviously it's better if people are not addicted to nicotine, but it's yeah. better that they use snus than smoke. I mean, presumably they don't get cancer from snus. And yeah. 
etc. There's no doubt about that. If you have to choose between snooze and smoking, uh, it's a completely uh, different story with smoking. Nothing can compare it, can be compared to smoking. Um, but as you just stated, probably a totally tobacco-free society is, a, is the best society. Is it a real Scandinavian thing? Because, at least in Belgium, another word that... that no, it, actually it is banned in the rest of the U European okay. Union, ap mm -hmm. apart from Sweden. And uh, I heard yesterday that you can also get it in Denmark. Okay. No? Okay. You can buy it. Okay. Okay. In the interest of time, I think we need, illegal to, things. we need to move. But, yeah. Thank you. Yes.